Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's word study. Today we're going to look at chapters 5 through 8 in the book of 2 Corinthians. That's Corinthium. But before we begin, of course, let's pitch our tents with our beloved Elohim. Let's bow our hearts. Dear beloved Abba Father, we come before you, Father, to worship you, to praise you, and to thank you, Father for everything. Most of all, Abba, for revealing your beloved Yahid Yeshua to us as we participate with you this day, Father, in being washed by and growing in your word. We thank you, Father, for opening our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we might see, hear, and understand the deeper meanings of your word. As we give this day, Abba, to you, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh, praying in Yeshua's Kodesh name, Yahweh, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Amen. Last week, we closed out with chapter 4, which was talking about our momentary distress, this passing trouble that we experience and how it is producing for us a far more exceeding and eternal mass of glory, a fullness beyond all measure, surpassing all comparisons, a transcendent splendor, and an endless, immeasurable beracha. And because of that, we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen, because the things which are visible are temporary. They are brief and fleeting, but the things which are invisible are everlasting and imperishable. And now, chapter 5. Because we know that if the earthly tent, our physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death, we have a building from Elohim, a house not made with hands, which is eternal in the Shamaim. Indeed, in this house we groan, longing to be clothed with our immortal, eternal, celestial dwelling, so that by putting it on, we will not be found naked. Note, Chavarim, this is a reference to uh, Adam and Eve, Adam and Chawa when they recognized that they were naked. Here it's telling us when we put on this eternal house, we will not be found naked. That is to say that by being clothed in our immortal, eternal, celestial dwelling, we will be clothed in light. And that is not being naked. That is what Adam and Eve saw when they saw that they were naked. Their clothing of light was gone. Continuing, For while we are in this tent, we groan, being burdened, often weighed down and oppressed, not that we want to be unclothed, that is to say, Chavarim, it's not that we want to be separated by death from the body, but to be clothed so that what is mortal, the body, will be swallowed up by Chai after the resurrection. Now, he who has made us and prepared us for this very purpose is Elohim, who gave us the Ruach HaKodesh as a pledge, a guarantee, a down payment on the fulfillment of his promise. So then, being always filled with good courage and confident expectation, and knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Adon, note, believers are either here on earth 
or they are in the Shamayim with the Adon. There is no grave and there is no purgatory for believers. Continuing, because we walk by being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word, not by sight. We are, as I was saying, of good courage with confident expectation, and we prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Adon. Therefore, whether we are at home on earth or away from home and with him, it is our constant ambition to be pleasing to him. For we, Kodeshim, will be called to account and must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach so that each one may be repaid for what has been done in the body, whether good or bad. That is, each of us will be held responsible for their actions, purposes, goals, and motives, as well as for the use or misuse of their time, opportunities, and abilities. Note, we've covered this before, the judgment seat of Mashiach is also known as the Bema seat of Mashiach. Bema is usually pronounced by most as Bema, but is properly pronounced Bema seat. The Bema seat is comprised of a raised platform which is preceded by steps and used as the official seat of a judge. Continuing, Therefore, since we know the reverent worship of Yahuwah, we persuade people to be reconciled to him. But we are plainly known to Elohim. He knows everything about us. And I trust that we are plainly known also in your consciences. That is to say, I trust that we are plainly known also by the discernment you are given through the Ruach HaKodesh. We, note Chavarim, we pointed this out last week, uh, pointed out again, when Shaul says we and our and all this uh, plurality, he's just talking about himself. When he says we are not commending or approving ourselves to you, he's really saying I'm not commending or approving myself to you. Continuing, we are not commending or approving ourselves to you yet again, but we are giving you an occasion to be rightfully proud of us so that you will have an answer for those who take pride in outward appearances. That is to say, so that you will have an answer for those who place great importance in the virtues they pretend to have rather than what is actually in their heart. If we are out of our mind, that is to say, if we were just unstable fanatics, as some critics say, it is for Elohim. And if we are in our right mind, it is for your benefit. For the love of Mashiach controls and compels us because we have concluded this, that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, so that all those who live would no longer live for themselves, but would rather live for him who died and was raised for their sake. So, from now on, we regard no one from a human point of view according to worldly standards and values. And even though we have known Mashiach, from a human point of view, we now no longer think of him in that way. Therefore, if anyone is in Mashiach, that is to say, if anyone is grafted in and joined to him through being washed by and growing in him, that is, in Yahweh's word, 
then that person is a new creature. Those old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. <laughs> and all these things are from Yahuwah, who reconciled us to himself through Mashiach and gave us the ministry of reconciliation so that by our example, we might bring others to him. That is, that Elohim was in Mashiach reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them, but canceling them. And he has committed to us his message of reconciliation, that is, the restoration of pitching tents with Elohim. So, we are ambassadors for Mashiach as though Elohim were making his appeal through us. As we plead with you on behalf of Mashiach, to be restored to pitching tents with Elohim. He made Mashiach, who knew no sin, to bear all sin on our behalf, so that in him we would become the righteousness of Elohim. That is to say, Chavrim, so that in him we would be made acceptable and placed in a right relationship with Elohim. Continuing, working together with him, we strongly urge you not to receive Elohim's pitching of tents in vain by turning away from being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word. Note, Ephesians tells us, we are saved by pitching tents with Elohim. But that doesn't happen until, or rather that happens through us being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word. Continuing, because he says, In an acceptable time I heard and answered you, and I helped you on Yom Yeshua. That is the day of salvation, the day of Yeshua. And behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation, the Yom Yeshua. Note, Yeshayahu, Isaiah, chapter 49, verse 8 is being quoted here, Chavrim, which literally reads, Yom Yeshua in the Aramaic Hebrew, translated as the day of salvation. Yom the day. Yeshua, salvation. Continuing, and we put no obstruction in anyone's path so that the ministry will not be discredited but we commend ourselves in every way as servants of Elohim, in great endurance, in sufferings, in hardships, in distresses, in beatings, in imprisonments, in riots, in labors, in sleepless nights, in hunger, in purity and sincerity, in knowledge and insight through the Ruach HaKodesh in patience, in kindness, in genuine love, in speaking the word of truth in the power of Elohim, by the weapons of righteousness for the right hand. That is to say, Chavarim, like holding a sword ready to attack, and for the left, that is to say, Chavarim, like holding a shield to defend ourselves with. Note, the weapons of righteousness. Look at FCM, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 14. Continuing, amid glory and dishonor by evil report and good report, branded as deceivers and yet vindicated as truthful, 
as unknown to the world, yet well known by Elohim and his children, as dying, yet we live, as punished, yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet bestowing riches on many, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. We are speaking freely to you, Corinthians. We are keeping nothing back, and our heart is opened wide. There's no limit to our affection for you, but you are limited in your own affection for us. And now, in the same way as a fair exchange for our love toward you, I'm speaking as I would to little children. Open wide your hearts to us also. Do not be unequally yoked with those who are not Kodesh. Do not make mismatched alliances with them, which are inconsistent with your being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word. For what partnership can righteousness have with lawlessness? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony can there be between Mashiach and Bali Ya'al? Note, Bali Ya'al in the Aramaic Hebrew means wicked or wickedness or worthless. Bali means without. Ya'al means value. Bailey, Ya'al, without value. Continuing. Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the Mishkan, the temple of Elohim, and idols? For we are the temple, the Mishkan of the living Elohim, just as Yahweh has said, I will dwell among them and walk among them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Waikra, Leviticus 26.12 So come out from among those who are not Kodesh, and be separate, says Yahweh. And do not touch what is unclean, and I will graciously receive you and welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says Yahweh El Shaddai. Therefore, since we have these great and wonderful promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit, perfecting and completing Kodeshah, that is, living a life that is dedicated to and for Elohim's purpose in reverent worship of Elohim. Note, how do we cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit? Look at 1 Yohanan, 1 John, chapter 1, verse 9. (laughs) Continuing, Make room for us in your hearts, We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I have said before that you are nested in our hearts, and you will remain there to die together and to live together with us. For you are nested in our heart, and you will remain there to die together and to live together with us. Great is my confidence in you. Great is my pride and boasting on your behalf. I am filled to the brim with comfort. I am overflowing with joy in spite of all our trouble. For even when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no rest but we were oppressed at every turn, conflicts and disputes without, 
fears and dread within. But Elohim, who comforts and encourages the depressed and the disquieted, comforted us by the arrival of Titos. And not only by his arrival, but also by his account of the encouragement which he received in regard to you. He told us about your longing for us, about your mourning over sin, and how eagerly you took my part and supported me, so that I rejoiced even more. For even though I did grieve you with my letter, I do not regret it now, though I did regret it, for I see that the letter hurt you, though only for a little while. Note, as we noted last week, Chavarim, many scholars believe the contents of the communication to which Paul refers in this verse are implied within chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, and again here in chapter 7, verses 5 through 12. Again, for even though I did grieve you with my letter, I do not regret it now, though I did regret it. For I see that the letter hurt you, though only for a little while. And yet I am glad now, not because you were hurt and made sorry, but because your sorrow led to repentance. And you turned back to Elohim. For you felt a grief such as Elohim meant you to feel, so that you might not suffer loss in anything on our account. For sadness that is in accord with the will of Elohim produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation. However, worldly sorrow, the hopeless sorrow of those who do not believe, produces death. For you can look back and see What an earnestness and authentic concern this sorrow, which was in accord with the will of Elohim, has produced in you. What vindication of yourselves against charges that you tolerate sin. What indignation at sin. What reverent worship of Elohim. What longing for righteousness and justice. What passion to do what is right. What readiness to punish those who sin and those who tolerate sin. At every point, you have proved yourselves to be innocent in the matter. So, even though I wrote to you as I did, it was not for the sake of the offender, nor for the sake of the one who offended, but in order to make evident to you before Elohim how earnestly you do care for us and your willingness to accept our authority. It is for this reason that we are comforted and encouraged. And in addition to our comfort, we were especially delighted at the joy of Titos, because his spirit has been refreshed by all of you. For if I have boasted to him at all concerning you, I was not disappointed. But just as everything we ever said to you was true, so our boasting about you to Titos has proved true also. His affection is greater than ever, as he remembers the obedience to his guidance which all of you exhibited, and how you received him with the greatest respect. I rejoice that in everything I have perfect confidence in you. Now, brothers, we want to tell you about the pitching of tents with Elohim which has been evident in the called-out ones of Macedonia, awakening in them a longing to contribute, for during an ordeal of severe distress, their abundant joy and their deep poverty together overflowed in the wealth of their lavish generosity. For I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave voluntarily begging us insistently for the privilege of participating in the service for the support of the Kodeshim in Jerusalem. Not only did they give materially, as we had expected, but they gave themselves first to the Adon and then to us as his representatives, 
by the will of Elohim, disregarding their personal interests and giving as much as they possibly could. So we urged Titos that, as he began it, he should also complete this work of pitching tents with you as well. But just as you excel in everything, being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word, in speech, in knowledge, in genuine concern, and in your love for us. See that you excel in this work of pitching tents also. I'm not saying this as a command, but to prove, by pointing out the enthusiasm of others, the sincerity of your love as well, for you are recognizing more and more clearly the pitching of tents with our Adon, Yeshua HaMashiach, that even though he was rich, he became poor for your sake, so that by his poverty you might become rich. I give you my opinion in this matter. It is to your advantage to be doing what you began and were desiring to do a year ago in helping the Kodeshim in Jerusalem. So, therefore, finish this so that your eagerness in desiring it may be equaled by your completion of it according to your ability. For if the eagerness to give is there, it is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what he does not have. For it is not intended that others be relieved of their responsibility and that you be burdened or afflicted unfairly from any lack of equality in sharing the burden. But by fair sharing, at this present time, your surplus will supply their need so that, at some other time, their surplus may supply your need, that there may be equality. For as it is written, He who gathered much did not have too much, and he who gathered little did not lack. Note, that, Chavarim, is speaking of manna, which also speaks of our being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word, gathering fresh food every day. Continuing, But thanks be to Elohim who puts the same genuine concern for you in the heart of Titos. For Titos not only accepted our appeal, but was so very interested in you that he has gone to visit you of his own accord. And we have sent along with him the brother who is praised in the ministry of the good news throughout all the called out ones. <laughs> Note, the brother who is praised. The identity of this man is unknown, but many believe it was Luke. Continuing, and not only this, but he has also been appointed by the called out ones to travel with us in regard to this gracious offering which we are administering for the esteem of the Adon himself and to show our eagerness as Kodeshim to help one another. We are taking precautions so that no one will find anything with which to discredit us in our administration of this generous gift. For we have regard for what is honorable and above suspicion, not only in the sight of Yahuwah, but also in the sight of men. We have sent with them our brother, whom we have often tested and found to be diligent in many things, but who is now even more diligent than ever because of his great confidence in you. As for Titos, he is my partner and fellow worker in your service. And as for the other two brothers, they are special messengers of the called out ones, the esteem of Mashiach. Note these special messengers of the called out ones in this passage, Chavarim, is not referring to the original twelve. Continuing, Therefore show these men in the sight of the called out ones the proof of your love and our reason for being proud of of you. <laughs> Let's bow our hearts. Beloved Abba, Father, 
We praise you and thank you, Father, for our time with you today in your word. Thank you, Father, for planting seeds in us that take root. Thank you so much, Abba, for opening doors that allow us to share this good news with others, especially our loved ones, but also everyone whom you could possibly send our way to open this door and let us bring the good news into the hearts of others while it is still yet called today. As we give this day, Father, in the name of your beloved Yahid Yeshua, Yahweh, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Amen. That's our study for this week, my friends. As always, I hope and I pray that this study remains a constant beracha to you and yours. Abba willing, I'll see you here again next week. Until then, Shalom Chavarim. Some would rather let it lie, but the question still remains.